The key to working efficiently in Final Cut Pro is taking the time to think about how you want your footage organized. You learned previously that libraries are the top level master containers for events. Events are containers for the individual media files you've imported from your camera or hard drive. Events are necessary because they make locating media you want to use in your projects much faster. For example, here I have a library I've created called Production Under 5 Master. This library contains all the individual episodes for a weekly YouTube series we produce that's focused on production gear. Notice that I've created a separate event for each episode in order to keep related media and projects grouped together. By selecting the DJI Ronin event, Final Cut Pro will only show me the footage and projects related to that particular episode. Whenever you select an event, its media appears in the browser directly to the right. If I select the Isolate 2 event, only clips I've imported into that event will appear in the browser. Let me state it again. The primary function of events is to create groups of related media and project content. There must be at least one event in each library, but you can create as many events as needed for your particular workflow. I like to think about events as buckets of media and the library itself as the bucket container. However you might think of events, at the end of the day, they're simply an organizational tool, much like a folder on your Mac desktop. Events can be broken down even further organizationally by the use of keyword collections and smart collections, both of which I'll be covering in the next several lessons. You can browse individual events for clips, or you can browse an entire library of clips by selecting the top level library icon, the one with four stars. Final Cut Pro will display all the media that exists in every event. If you've created more than one event as I've done with this library, each event will appear as a group header in the browser that can be closed or opened. A number next to the event name informs you how many clips are in a particular event. To clean up the library pane, you can hide the events by clicking the disclosure triangle next to the library. In the previous lesson on importing, I had you create a library called H5 Productions and an event called Sabercat to import the tutorial media into. Selecting the event reveals its clips in the browser. Let's say that a number of clips in our library was getting very large and we wanted to create a new event to isolate a select group of clips. Select the H5 Productions library, then right-click and choose New Event or press Option N. A new event window appears. Unless you change it, Final Cut Pro will name your event with the current date. Name this event Flyovers. Choose the library you want the event to reside in from this pop-up. Make sure H5 Productions is targeted. The option labeled Create New Project will create an empty and untitled project in your event. You may recall that projects are the containers for the movies you create. They are where all your edit decisions happen. We'll be discussing projects in a future lesson, so for now, leave this option unchecked. A new event labeled Flyovers appears in the library. Selecting it reveals no clips and no projects in the browser. You can rename your event at any time by clicking once on the event name, then clicking again. Let's rename this event Southern Arizona Flyovers. At this point, you could import media from your camera or hard drive and target this event, or you could copy media from a pre-existing event into it. Select the Arial's keyword collection inside the Sabercat event. This will bring up eight clips in the browser. Select three or four clips by shift-clicking them. Selected clips appear with a yellow border. If you click and drag the selection directly over the Southern Arizona Flyovers event, you'll see a number telling you how many clips you are moving into that event. Notice I said move, not copy. Once you release your mouse, these clips will no longer reside in the Sabercat event. If you want to copy the media and not move it, you'll need to add a modifier key. Press and hold the option key down. You'll see a green plus icon next to the number of clips you are copying. Release your mouse and you'll now have two sets of the same clips residing in two separate events. Whether you move or copy clips from one event to another, it's very important to understand that no physical files on your hard drive are being moved or copied. Clips in the event are only references to clips on your hard drive. You'll also need to know how to delete media from an event. Select the Southern Arizona Flyovers event, then select the clips you copied. Right-click and choose Move to Trash or press Command Delete. The clips were trashed and no longer appear in the browser. Again, no media was actually trashed only the clip references to the media. That said, there is one instance where you can actually trash the media files on your hard drive, so pay close attention. Select the Sabercat event. This is the event containing all the original clips we imported. Original clips directly reference media files in your library. 
right click on any clip and choose Move to Trash. A window appears warning you that you're about to move one or more media files into the trash because you're deleting the last clip reference to them. Clicking OK will not only delete the clip reference, it will move the media files from the library into the trash. If you have SIM clips in your library, only SIM clips will be moved to the trash. Media files in external locations will be left untouched. Said another way, Final Cut Pro will never move any external files into the trash. They will always remain where they are. Click Cancel. If you have an event with many clips you want to trash, sometimes it's more practical to delete the event itself. Since we'll be using the Sabercat event for this tutorial, we won't be deleting it, but we will delete the Southern Arizona Flyovers event. Right-click on it and choose Move Event to Trash. A dialog appears warning you that you will not only be deleting the event, but all clips contained within the event. Click Continue. If you right-click on the Sabercat event and choose Move Event to Trash, and click Continue, you'll be told that the library must contain at least one event, and you're prevented from doing this. You can view clips within each event as a film strip or a list view. The button to switch from one view to the other appears in the upper right of the browser. In film strip view, your clips are represented by multi-frame horizontal strips. You can adjust the size of these film strips by clicking the clip appearance button, then dragging the duration slider all the way to the right. A thumbnail image is displayed for every half second of video and the film strip gets longer. This view takes up more space and you'll need to scroll to see the entire film strip for a given clip. The advantage of the film strip view is you can clearly see by the thumbnails where certain actions begin and end, particularly on shots like this helicopter flyby. If the clip is longer than what can be displayed in the browser, the clip appears with a serrated edge along either side to indicate that the film strip continues into the next row. To identify the actual beginning and end of a clip, look for the smooth edge of the film strip. I find that a good position to set the duration slider to is to display the image every 5 seconds because it keeps the film strip at a relatively small size and there are still enough thumbnails to see what's happening in the movie. There's also a slider that gives you control over the clip height and a toggle for showing or hiding audio waveforms. One feature you might find helpful when previewing all your footage is the continuous playback option. Move your pointer over the end of the clip and press your spacebar. The clip plays but pauses when it reaches the end of the clip. Now place a check next to Continuous Playback, then repeat this action. Only this time, you'll notice that the playback does not pause at the end of the clip, but keeps right on playing right into the next clip, and the next one. This feature is useful when you want to watch uninterrupted playback of every clip in your browser. Let's turn that off for now. If, however, your point of reference is Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Avid, You'll most likely prefer working in List View, which is functionally similar to the project windows in those editing applications. This view should be familiar to you as it's the same view presented in the Media Import window, and functionally it's identical. In this view, clip information called metadata is presented in a spreadsheet layout. Metadata is information that describes each clip, such as a codec, duration, frame size, and so on. You can sort by specific metadata by clicking on a column header. If you wanted to view all your clips by duration in ascending order, click the duration header. If you wanted to sort by the clip starting time code, click the start header, and so on. To rearrange the column order, drag on the header right or left. To add or remove column metadata, right click on the column header to reveal a menu of options. Items with check marks indicate metadata columns already visible. Selecting a check marked item will hide it from view, and selecting an unchecked item will display it. When you select a clip, its film strip appears in the top of the event browser where you can skim through it and play it. To view the keywords applied to a clip, click the triangle next to the clip's name. In list view, the types of clips are identified by icons. Video clips have a film strip, audio clips have a speaker, and still images appear with an image icon. Let's quickly take a look at ways you can organize your events using the metadata captured by your recording device. Make sure the Sabercat event is selected. Click the film strip button. Using the Group By pop-up menu, you can sort your clips by various groupings. By default, it's set to None. Choosing Group Clips by Content will create grouping headings in the browser by the date your media was recorded, assuming your camera operator took the time to set this in the camera. Choose Duration from the menu, and all clips will appear in Duration Range groupings. Choose File Type, and your clips appear in File Type groupings. I think you get the picture. There's also another option called Sort By, 
but the option is unavailable in list view. Click the film strip view button and choose sort by and you'll be able to arrange your video film strips by the options listed. Choose name for example and your thumbnails will be arranged alphabetically according to clip names. Also notice that the clip groupings by file type is still the primary grouping criteria. Take a few moments to experiment with various combinations of event groupings and clip arrangements. When you're finished, set Group Clips By back to None and return the browser back to List View.